Hey marketers, your marketing plan deserves more than just reach. It needs real connection. Podcast advertising with Acast puts your brand in the ears of your perfect audience when they're paying most attention. And with more than 1 billion listens every quarter, we know your next customer is listening to Acast podcasts, no matter what app they're using. Target audiences like paid social with cinema-like attention. Whether it's by demographics, interests, or your own first-party data, connect with the right people with Acast. Visit go.acast.com slash ads to get started today. Welcome to day number 22 of 31 Days of Terror and I have three spooky stories for you today and the last story comes from September the 14th, 2024 and story number one comes from Lorna. My childhood home was rather freaky. My dad used to say there was a little girl who we used to see sitting on the stairs but I never saw her. I did however experience numerous strange things. Someone would whisper good night into your ear as you were going to bed, or you'd wake up and someone would be holding your hand even though you were alone. You could chalk that up to still being half asleep, but both my mum and my dad experienced this too, and I can't forget the man that used to stand at the bottom of the stairs. Most of the time the encounters felt loving though. One day my mum and I were driving home and as we approached the house we saw through the big bay window that my sister was standing in the middle of the living room playing on the Wii and behind her in the doorway there was a man. My mum was surprised and said oh your dad's home early but as we got to the driveway his car wasn't there. We walked into the house and asked my sister if my dad was home and she said that she was alone and no one else was in the house. But both my mum and I clearly saw a man standing behind her. Weird. One of the more comforting occurrences was when our family dog, Bruce, passed away. Now, Bruce used to sleep on the landing at the top of the stairs. That's where the heating pipe was, so it was nice and warm. And he used to scratch the carpet to get comfortable. A couple of days after he passed, we were all sitting in the living room watching TV. And suddenly we heard the scratching at the top of the stairs. It was nice to know that Bruce was making himself comfortable even though he was no longer with us. The only time I ever felt threatened was when we had sold the house and it was one of the last nights I was spending there. I was alone and decided to sleep in my sister's old room. I had just gotten into bed and turned the light off. I tried to pull the covers up as I sleep with them completely over my head due to the ominous whispering that I occasionally heard. But this time the covers felt like they were stuck. I tugged a few times on the cover before opening my eyes and looking down to the bottom of the bed. There was a dark shape sitting at the end of the bed. I kept trying to blink it away but it was just sitting there. I was absolutely terrified but was I heck going to stick around with this thing so I slipped out of bed and ran for the door. I got out of the bedroom and turned on all the lights upstairs and decided that I would pull an all-nighter and sit downstairs because I was not going to be upstairs anytime soon. I got halfway down the stairs when up came this dark figure of a man walking up the stairs towards me. I froze and he walked right past me. I actually felt him barge past me. I can still remember the force as his shoulder collided into mine. I never went back to the house after that, but I think about it quite often. I like to think that the male presence that was downstairs was not too impressed with whatever that thing was at the end of the bed and decided to go up and sort it out, because that was the only time I've ever seen him actually come up the stairs. But who really knows? I used to be rather in tune with all things supernatural, but as I've gotten older, I'm better at blocking it all out. I think I would rather stay ignorant. I feel you, Lorna. I'm just like, what you don't know can hurt you. You know, if you just pretend it isn't there, pretend it doesn't exist, then you're going to be fine. Easy. So obviously we start with your dad seeing this wee girl sat on the stairs, and you know, you didn't personally see her that in itself is a lot you know and then to have somebody whisper good night into your ear 
And the thing is, right, you could always say, you know, it's exploding head syndrome, whatever. If you don't know what exploding head syndrome is and you're listening to this, look it up. Exploding head syndrome is basically when you have essentially auditory hallucinations as you're falling asleep. It's like your brain misfires and you you might hear, you know, someone calling your name or somebody whispering in your ear or some people hear like music or a gunshot or, you know, I've experienced it. It can be very alarming. It's 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 really, I mean, the brain is crazy, right? But this is something that everybody in the house is experiencing, not just you. And that makes it so much more compelling, right? Because everybody is experiencing this and that feeling of somebody holding your hand while you're sleeping. And I know that fundamentally this, you know, obviously at times would have been a very frightening experience. Oh, but that poor ghost just just wanting to be loved, just wanting to be noticed, just whispering goodnight in your ear sitting at your bedside holding your hand while you're sleeping oh god it's it's, what a lonely sad existence and I feel like that experience of driving home and seeing a man kind of standing behind your sister as she was playing the Wii and thinking oh you know dad's home and then realizing that there wasn't actually a man there like it was some sort of entity or whatever I feel like that could have been a much more horrific and terrifying experience you know but clearly whatever this was, this man that was downstairs was a positive entity or a caring entity or something that was just there to keep an eye on your family. And while obviously that experience was terrifying that night, oh God, I I just, the thought of being in bed and you go to pull the covers up and you're like, oh, it's stuck on something. And then you look up and there's fucking a shadow sitting at the end of your bed. That is absolutely terrifying. But I love the fact that whatever lived downstairs was like no you do not get to scare the shit out of her like this and stormed up the stairs shouldering you out of the way en route to to look after you that feels like being looked after you know so maybe whatever that entity was that lived downstairs was like a a guardian spirit or something hey marketers your marketing plan deserves more than just reach it needs real connection Podcast advertising with Acast puts your brand in the ears of your perfect audience when they're paying most attention. And with more than 1 billion listens every quarter, we know your next customer is listening to Acast Podcasts, no matter what app they're using. Target audiences like paid social with cinema-like attention. Whether it's by demographics, interests, or your own first-party data, connect with the right people with Acast. Visit go.acast.com slash ads to get started today. And story number two comes from Amanda. I hesitate to send this because it really could just be my subconscious, but I still thought it was worth sharing. Also, my dad, Pete, was always a storyteller, so even if it was just a dream, the story itself is pretty fun, just like him. Pete passed away in January 2023. I'm the youngest of four kids but was closer to dad both in proximity but also in how often we talked or saw each other. He was my person. The person I called when things were good and especially when things were not so good. I'm writing this now as I wait for my flight so I can spread his ashes on Route 66. Pete had a stroke and was in the hospital for a week before his passing. He passed on a date worth noting. My anniversary with my boyfriend of several years. The reason I find it noteworthy is because the first time I introduced him to the boyfriend was at a St. Urho gathering where all sorts of friends and family come together to celebrate a fake saint. It's an excuse for the community to have a party and a parade. It was common to bring friends of all sorts, not just significant others. I had told the boyfriend in the strictest terms that we were not to acknowledge that we were seeing each other. I didn't want to be teased by Pete for dating, which he would do even though I was well past my mid-thirties. Months go by and while talking to my dad, I mention the boyfriend. He immediately starts giving me shit. Who told you you can have a boyfriend? I point out, Dad, you know about him. You've met him. He's been at your house. Yes, I trolled my dad. I was proud of it. He didn't try to tease me about the boyfriend again after that, which is exactly what I was going for. He got me in the end, dying on our anniversary as an epic way to poke fun at me one final time for not asking his permission to date someone. 
Truly a funny Pete move if ever there was one. So months go by and nothing. Then I had a dream about him. All four of us siblings were at the house dealing with stuff and here he walks in wearing aviator sunglasses because he thought they made him look cool. When I pointed out, um, just a tiny little thing here Pete, didn't you sort of a little bit die? He chuckled and said, yeah, don't worry about that. Then he went on to say there were three really important things to be aware of. He said he had machinery like a skid steer and stuff that we should track down for the estate. Then he went off on a tangent of nothing important. He eventually laughed, did the Minnesota slap of his leg and said, well, I should get going and walked out. He never did get to the other two really important things. I don't think there were three important things. Even in my dreams, he was pulling my leg. I don't know if Pete visited me from the other side or if my brain just made it all up. I don't really care either way. It was deeply comforting to get to see and hear my dad again and experience one more time his ability to weave some bullshit together to make a great story of it all. After I emailed this, I flew out to Las Vegas to spread my dad's ashes on Route 66. The following day, I went to a car museum. Cars were something my dad and I both appreciated. After walking through the museum, we popped into the gift shop. There were souvenir shot glasses with the names on them. The display showed both my name, but also my dad's. This felt like a nod from my dad, telling me he was happy about how I took care of him after he passed. Oh, you know what? These stories are so beautiful. And I know, obviously, losing a parent, losing a loved one, losing somebody that you care about in your life or that means a lot to you is incredibly difficult, right? But these stories are so beautiful. First of all, And like you said, it really doesn't matter if it was a dream, like if it was your psyche or if it was your dad visiting you in your dream. What matters is it brought you comfort and made you feel positive. And he came to you in a dream in a way that was so, so him, like coming and telling a bullshit story and being like, I've got three really important things. Here's the first thing. And now I'm leaving, you know, like that's just really lovely and must have been a lovely thing to wake up to and go okay this has happened and I think visitation dreams are really interesting I've said before I've had sort of two experiences you know in the last few years of what what felt maybe like visitation dreams and they do have a different quality about them they just felt different and I hope that somebody listening to this can listen and go oh actually maybe maybe that dream that I had about my loved one that passed away Maybe that was them coming back to give me a message or give me some comfort and I hope that you get some closure from it. And I do think the universe works in strange and wonderful ways, you know. Like I love the fact that you went and spread his ashes which is a monumental thing to do and a very emotional thing to do. And then you go to a gift shop and there's a huge display with your dad's name and your name. And just to say I've seen pictures of this display, like it's not just you know, it's not just like there's a little, a little name, Pete, and a little name, Amanda, like, (laughs) it's, it's big, it's like the universe with a big neon sign going, hello, I just wanted to tell you that this, this was a nice thing for you to do, and your dad is very thankful. And our final story today comes from Pixie. A little background information, before I was born, I lost a twin brother. When I was younger, I learned that I had a twin, His name was supposed to be, or is, Lan Michael. Michael is his middle name, but we would have just called him Lan Michael. I'm currently 13. For years, when I still believed in a deity, I would pray that he would visit me, that he would let me know that he is okay. It wasn't until a few days ago that he listened. I was dreaming about an old cabin, Marty McFly from Back to the Future, Sal Fisher from a game called Sally Face, an evil witch, Lan and myself. Marty had a doppelganger who he claimed was his twin brother. Sal had a twin brother that looked an awful lot like Larry, his stepbrother in the game, and I could feel Lan's presence. I couldn't see or hear him, but I knew he was there. The witch was claiming to be Sal's mother and we all kept denying it. After hiding for a while, the six of us hung her and framed it as a suicide. I don't know what message Lan was trying to send by visiting me in a dream such as this. 
Maybe it's because I haven't been doing so well lately or he just had to visit. It could be anything. First of all, completely irrelevant to the story, but I love the name Pixie. I think it's such a cute name. Second of all, again, irrelevant to the story. It always baffles me that like young teenagers listen to the podcast. Like 13 year olds listen to the podcast. It blows my mind. Anyway, aside from that, I mean, I personally have very strange, vivid dreams which sound quite similar to this, where all sorts of mad things are happening. And it might not necessarily be that your twin was trying to send you a message or trying to send a message by using, you know, these other characters that were in the dream. It might just be that he wanted you to feel his presence. You know, you said that you could feel his presence. You couldn't see him or hear him, but you knew he was there, which is a really strange thing about dreams. I often have dreams where physically the person will be a complete stranger like I will I will not recognize them but I know in my dream that they are a person that I know or they represent a person that I know and it's such a strange feeling but maybe he just wanted to visit you know maybe that was that was it maybe you were having this strange dream and he just happened to pop in to let you know that he was there maybe it's as simple as that that you're having this hard time at the moment things aren't feeling too good And he used this opportunity to let you know that he is there with you and they're looking after you. Thank you so much for listening to day number 22 of 31 Days of Terror. Thank you to Lorna, Amanda and Pixie for sending in your stories. Remember the last story came from September the 14th, 2024. And if you would like to send in your story, you can do so by emailing it to reallifeghoststoriespodcast.gmail.com. You can also check out the website, reallifeghoststoriespodcast.com. And if you are desperate for some extra content, you can subscribe to the Patreon. That is patreon.com forward slash reallifeghoststories, where for $5 a month or $2 a month, you get access to heaps of extra content, as well as every single main and mini episode completely ad free and on that note i shall see you next time be ready no matter what the temperature with crop metcalf's 99 heating and cooling system check call 1-800-GO-CROP or visit cropmetcalf.com crop metcalf is the one with five stars crop metcalf home of the five-star technician